Now, with Tanya Francisco and Amy Rutledge, this is Daytime Chicago. Plus, the author of a new book, The Invisible Machine, is here to talk about how to recognize the symptoms of stress and what we can do to fix it. April is Stress Awareness Month, and with 70% of adults having experienced at least one impactful traumatic event in their lifetime, it's important to be able to recognize the signs of stress. Dr. Eugene Lipov, author of The Invisible Machine, The Startling Truth About Trauma and the Scientific Breakthrough That Can Transform Your Life, joins us now with more. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. As so many people, I don't think, realize that some of the physical symptoms that they're feeling are actually due to stress that's been in their life, correct? Exactly right. So when, when you have stress, especially overwhelming stress, you know, uh, crime, military action, police action, whatever, it can get stuck like that. So when it gets stuck like that, that's PTSD. Okay, and so what's the difference? You point out that there's a difference between PTSD and PTSI. Tell us about the difference. Uh, of course. So PTSD is a term that was introduced in 1980 using DSM-3. Uh, so basically it's a disorder. But I think about it, if you have a physiologic change, let's say you have a broken leg disorder, okay. what are you gonna do about it? Nothing. You go, well, that's what it is. But if you get the x-ray, you got a problem, go fix it. Right. So in the modern age, when people say, a lot of people tell me PTSD is an invisible wound, my answer is it's invisible if you have the wrong scanner. Mm -hmm. The modern scanners like PET scanners and FMR, you can actually see it. So it's really important to be able to think of PTSD as PTSI, because if, especially I work with a lot of military people, mm -hmm. and if you think about Green Berets, it's like, I don't want to have a disorder, what is that? It means I'm weak, it's a weakness of soul, I don't know what it is. But if I can do a brain scan and say, hey, your amygdala is overactivated, you have a problem, let me help you, it increases people seeking treatment. Okay. It increases awareness and actually ultimately it saves lives because it reduces suicide. Mm -hmm. I think it's an amazing way. It's very important to change that name from PTSD to PTSI. And explain to people, because there are physical symptoms of stress. It's not just in your brain. It can manifest itself elsewhere. So what does stress look like in a person? Well, stress, you can't sleep, right? That's one of the things. Mm -hmm. But the blood pressure increases. Mm -hmm. Long-term stress or PTSD or whatever can increase the chance of heart attacks by a factor of two. Mm -hmm. So if you check people's coronaries, they're always squeezed. Mm -hmm. So if they're squeezed, they put in more plaque. More plaque, you're going to have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. There is potentially it increases the chance of cancer and things like that. So there is a lot of physiologic changes and high blood pressure causes strokes, right? All of that, that's not just in your head. Mm -hmm. And the question is when people say just in the head means you can just snap out of it. Right. You can't snap out of PTSI. You're stuck on it. The stuff I do can reset the fight and flight system. And you can actually reset it, but just say, hey, don't be nervous. It's all good. Mm -hmm. how, how does it work? Right. Oh, not yeah, exactly. So how, how do you treat it? Well, I'm an anesthesiologist, right? I'm not a psychiatrist. Okay. So my particular expertise is sympathetic uh, nervous system, fight and flight system. Okay. So if I may, I'd like to tell you what PTSD is and what yep. it's not. So when somebody has an event, a severe event, okay. or multiple small events, fight and flight system gets turned on and stays on. Okay. And the symptoms would be overreactivity stimuli. Somebody touches you, you jump out of your skin. You can't <laughs> sleep, nightmares. Those are two things that predict suicide, by the way. Mm. Those are two things. But there are other things. You're always hypervigilant. You're looking for something bad to happen. And there's also a feeling of doom. Those are signs of fight and flight system overactivation. Okay. As a pain physician, I've been doing something called stellar ganglion block. In an advanced version of it, we call it DSR, dual sympathetic reset. We're resetting the sympathetic system to before trauma state. And people can come out 10, 15 minutes later and go, oh, I'm relaxed. I don't feel like I'm going to die. Okay. It's an injection in the neck that the first time it was done was 1926. Oh. First time I personally done it was 1987. Oh. But it's a standard pain procedure. I'm a pain physician. Mm -hmm. But I was through an interesting set of circumstances, I was able to figure out it was PTSD. So I actually have a letter of support from uh, Senator Obama, not President Obama, from mm -hmm. 2007. So I've been at this for a long time in Chicago. Well, and this was something before that was reserved for veterans and, and folks that had dealt with severe traumatic disorders. And now you're getting it to folks that are, are dealing with something that may not be on the level they were thinking of before, correct? It was never reserved for that. Okay. But people usually associate 
It's like, you know, I, I'm just a regular Joe. Right. And then I'm not going to get PTSD. But, you know, the question is, who, are, who is there, who's going to be there to judge how bad this person's PTSD is compared to that right. one? I would say some military PTSD might not be as bad as if, if a woman was sent for sexual slavery for 10 years. I would say that's probably worse. Oh, right? okay. I mean, how, how do you decide that? Right. So I've always offered it to everybody. Okay. We do something called PCL, which is a checklist we typically do. But the most common, people think military is the most common PTSD location. Mm -hmm. It's not. If you, go ahead. So let me ask you this. So you get the shot and you're feeling better, but do you still need some type of therapy to deal with the trauma that you've actually experienced? Yes. So, for example, we had a number. That's a very common question. <clears throat> so if somebody comes in and see a therapist for like two, three years, you're not making progress because your body is overactive. You mm -hmm. can't participate. We do the block and then we have them see the therapist and then next couple of months they make a lot of breakthroughs because uh. the body is not overactive uh. you're not shutting down right mm -hmm. and then we also recommend meditation which grows brain tissue back mm. yoga oh. right exercise that produces endorphins makes you calm but yeah absolutely it's it's idea to open the door so now you can be successful resolving the trauma and go on with your life yeah. and many people can come over the drugs uh, psychiatric medications because the body is not running at 1,000 miles per hour. Mm. I think finally people are realizing that you have to take care of your mental health as much as your physical health. But you sure. can't separate it. Right. It's connected. Yeah. Right. No connected. brain, no body. Right, exactly. Ooh, you said all mouthful there. <laughs> oh, Dr. Lipoff, thank you so much. The book, again, is called The Invisible, <clears throat> Invisible Machine. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have more information on our website. Thank you for having me. All right.